I'm Jessica Minton for IB Times TV and I'm joined by Joseph Greco from Meridian who's going to be talking to us today about what we should be focusing on for the economic calendar this week. Thank you so much for joining me. It's good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So this week we have so many different things coming out. So I'll start with the U.S. with that jobs report coming out on Friday. Now, last month it did miss forecasts. Can we expect to see a rebound, if at all possible? Um, well, I think we're going to continue to see a little bit of improvement. So we, we did miss, yes, um, as far as missing what uh, the estimates were. But we are, we are continuing to see a little bit of sentiment improvement, which should be good. Um, at this point, you know, being a prognosticator based on what the markets are telling me, the markets are up. Hopefully that means that, uh, you know, the unemployment number is slowly decreasing and that means that uh, jobless claims are decreasing with it. Also, we have the FOMC meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, they've kept the similar stance over the past few months. Are we most likely going to see that happen again? Right. Well, when everyone starts to compare their side by side notes from the prior meeting to this meeting, I think we're going to see actually very similar language. We're not going to see a major departure in terms of uh, policy, uh, how much or how quickly the asset purchasing program is going to continue. I think, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be very much um, in line with we're going to continue to purchase assets. That's going to continue through the year end. We're not going to vary the pace just yet, but they're going to leave the door open as usual to perhaps varying that pace. And of course, the, you know, the big questions on people people's minds, which is when is this all going to start to wrap up? And I think they will just hint at the point that when the time comes, they will not say or put a date on that. Right. On Wednesday, we are going to see those auto sales numbers. Can we expect to see demand continue throughout 2013? You know, that's been very interesting, uh, you know, piece of data of late. We've seen it shift both from, uh, you know, the, the the cars and the autos that, that people buy for everyday use and then of course uh, you know the light trucks and, and SUVs which people use perhaps in more of a commercial or workplace setting and and those have played back and forth but I think for the most part what we've gotten out of this is that you know Ford, GM, Chrysler even have done a very good job of rebuilding their model and getting back out there and, and putting cars in front of people so as long as they've done what they need to do in this first quarter we do have of course the uh, the ever-present you know tax rebate which which gets back to people and is money that that people then quickly spend. So hopefully that, you know, for the auto manufacturers, that will pad the number a little bit. And I'd like to see that be the case at this point. I'm expecting actually auto sales to be an increase. Moving over to Europe, there's been a lot of debate over the past few months about the ECB and cutting interest rates. When they do have that meeting on Thursday, can we expect to see a rate cut? I'd be a little surprised at this point, you know, while we've obviously had an unprecedented move by Japan just less than a month ago, and the U.S. has been at, you know, uh, this, the bottom uh, pretty much for a, a prolonged period of time, and we'll see it for at least another two to three quarters uh, before any consideration of rate increase there. I don't see the impetus right at this moment. Uh, bond yields and bond sales in Europe have actually been quite robust in the face of everything else that's going on between Cyprus and perhaps even, you know, a, a rekindled flame in, uh, in Greece. So I. I'm not anticipating that they need to do anything monetarily just yet, but I'll throw an asterisk on that because just around the corner, we'll have our final meetings before the summer, and that's usually when we do see some action before they shut it down for the months in, into June and July. And finally, China's PMI is coming out on Wednesday. Now, last week we saw a drop in their new export orders. Well, since Europe is one of their biggest partners and there's so much instability in that region right now, is that going to take a hit on their PMI number coming out? It could very well, and I would expect that any hit to PMI would be a result of exactly what you alluded to, the, the European situation. Um, what I am a little skeptical on is whether or not that's the data that's put forth. I always I always put uh, you know that information coming out of China in italics because sometimes they pull a rabbit out of the hat, and the numbers are actually considerably better than we would have anticipated. Um, so we'll, we'll just have to take that, that number with a grain of salt and see exactly what it is and what the drill down is. If, if there is a miss, and if it's not from Europe, then I'm going to be a little concerned about the bigger picture. Where is that coming from and what's, what's weighing so heavily on uh, China PMI?